Greetings to all my learned magic friends out there. My name is Jeff Kowalk and you are watching Erudite Magic. As always, we have a very exciting episode for you today. We're going to be talking about modern mem deck miracles. If you're into card magic miracles, I think that today's episode will be especially interesting for you. And if you're just getting started out in the world of mem deck work, there'll be even more for you to gather. I'm excited to get into this topic today, so let's get right on into it. As we get started, I want to remind you that I am on social media, on Instagram and Facebook, posting pictures, thoughts, quotes, and asking questions of you about what you're reading and what you're interested in. And by the way, we have a brand new offering, the community page, now that we've reached a thousand subscribers. So head on over to my channel page, click on the community tab. I will be posting various polls there, pictures, and interacting with you, the viewers, to find out what it is that you want to see and how this channel can help you. Over the last few years, I feel like the name Patrick Redford has gotten more and more attention among magicians who are paying attention. You know who you are. I've known of Patrick's reputation for quite a while, and I've seen him at Magi Fest and other places performing and always been very impressed. So when I heard that he was producing a new book, I reached out to him and asked him if he would send me a review copy for me to tell you about here on this channel. He acquiesced to my request and voila, here we are. Patrick Redford is the alter ego for George Tate, a young Detroit-based magician who primarily focuses on card magic work. He's published a bunch of different items over the years, several books, including his most recent Slightly Out of Order. Slightly Out of Order is his second book in the trilogy that he's publishing on memdeck work. It explores a lot of different concepts of memdeck work. Of course, all of it would apply to his particular stack, the Redford stack, although most of it will apply to whatever stack you're using. So let's talk about it for a second. What is the Redford stack? Well, the key thing that I've identified is it sets itself apart from the more well-known duopolies of Aronson and Mnemonica. So how does it set itself apart? His stack is intentional as opposed to Aronson and Tamariz's stacks that are more, well, let's just say that the provenance is unknown. No one knows exactly how those two came up with their stacks, whether they shuffled a deck and memorized it that way and then tried to find patterns that would work for tricks. But in Patrick Redford's stack, what you're going to find is that he has designed the stack from the ground up, building on the shoulders of giants to incorporate many different benefits on purpose. For example, in the Redford stack, you're able to actually switch into Cy Stebbins by doing a series of overhand shuffles. Now you'll have to do nine or 10 shuffles to go from Redford stack to Cy Stebbins, but it is doable and it's pretty easy to do. The standard benefits that you would get from a Cy Stebbins if you need a red-black separation or you need some sort of relationship between card mates, then you can quickly and easily get into that and back to the Redford stack and you won't really have to do any Pharaoh shuffles although more on that to come. Another way that this book and Patrick's stack set itself apart is that you really only need to be a stack worker. You don't have to be a mem deck proponent. What do I mean by that? I'm saying that you don't actually have to have memorized Patrick Redford's stack to use some of the items in this book. It'll be a real asset to you if you do have it memorized, but even if you don't, I think this is a good book to get you going and to help you see some of the ways that you could deploy a deck without having to do a lot of mental gymnastics. So most of the tricks in here are not going to require you to do calculations on your feet. And in fact, Patrick writes in the book that he's not very good at thinking and talking at the same time. So he has designed most of the routines in this book so that if you are doing talking to your audience, the work that you're doing is either automatic or there's some sort of system to help you get where you need to go while you talk. The book is over 250 pages long and has over 30 different effects for the stack worker. Some of the best names in magic have obviously read this book as you can see from the back cover and have opined with some very favorable commentary. Which brings me to the word of the day for slightly out of order, which is astute.
Indeed, Patrick has assessed so many situations in this book and turned them to his advantage, and he's going to show you how you can turn them to your advantage. There are lots of different presentational hooks that he provides to you. Some of them have to do with psychology and choice. Some of them have to do with memory. Some of them have to do with, do you think that psychic phenomenon is real? There are a lot of interesting ways to present the tricks. Most of the tricks in the book I'll call are amplified classics. In other words, he's going to teach you some really clever ways to do standard tricks like a triumph. And although there's no doubt in my mind that Patrick Redford is a highly intelligent person, you don't have to be super smart to perform the items in this book. So the type of skill level that you're looking at, I think there are a number of items that are essentially self-working if you follow the directions and you have the ability to memorize doing things in order, as most magic tricks require. But most of them can be accomplished with a modicum of skill. If you're a more accomplished practitioner with the pasteboards, then there's also some things here to like for you. There's a section in here on Pharaoh shuffles, which don't necessarily only apply to the Redford stack. If you're any kind of a stack worker, the Pharaoh work that he talks about and explains would apply to your stack as well and present some really interesting possibilities. In addition to being magician foolers, if you just like to challenge yourself in front of an audience, you could deploy some of these Pharaoh shuffle techniques. Every trick is extremely well taught. I would say that the book is text dense or text heavy. There are pictures everywhere there needed to be, black and white photography, that clearly show the situation when it's called for. So what are some of the highlights for me? At the very beginning, as is his practice to do, the author gives you a trick right there in the introduction, a la Guy Hollingworth. It's a neat version that applies to the Redford stack to perform prior commitment, the Simon Aronson classic, and it's automatically set up with a twist to the standard presentation of prior commitment. It won't require two extra cards like jokers, and at the end, you'll actually be left completely back with your stack intact. I thought it was great to see right away how Patrick thinks about an effect. You'll see how his thinking has progressed from a book that was published a while ago to this one. That's not to say you're getting a rehash of things you got before. In most cases, he's taken the trick on a tangent or in a different direction, or he's come up with a different trick that might use a similar method or presentation. I don't own all of his previous works, so I can't tell you if there's any duplication. I can tell you that his first book of this trilogy, Temporarily Out of Order, gives you the Redford stack and its advantages and other ways to get in and out of it with partially shuffled decks, etc. I don't own that one, so I'm only going on what I've read on the internet or in the ad copy. However, this book will teach you the stack and tell you how to get in and out of Cy Stebbins or from New Deck Order as a recap. He tells you up front that there are other methods that are in that first book, so you'll need to pick those up if you want to learn additional ways to get into stack from, say, a participant shuffled deck. I have for a long time performed Henry Chris's fabulous four ace trick as taught in John Bannon's Dear Mr. Fantasy. Patrick teaches his own version, which has specific advantages working from the Redford stack, and then at the end, with a small bit of procedure, puts you right back into stack, which is always an advantage. I wanna thank Don's Magic and Books for sponsoring this episode of Erudite Magic. Don offers a huge variety of both props and books on his website, and he frequently gets in new inventory, so I recommend that you check it out often. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, drop Don a note. Sometimes he is able to tell you if he has something coming in. For all of my viewers out there, he's going to offer you 10% off this week. I will put the code down in the description for the video. Probably one of my favorite items in the book was the Perpetual Birthday card. So if you're familiar with Bob Cassidy's Chronolog or any of the myriad of imitators subsequent that allow you to hand out a calendar, have a person pick their birthday, and there's a card written on that birth date, that corresponds to a card that you've predicted ahead of time or something along those lines. If you're familiar with your version of the trick, you know how it works. Patrick has a version that does that here, but I love it because it brings the trick into the 21st century. What do I mean by that? No more carrying around a pocket calendar. You can actually do this with a Google calendar. And there are other things that he has added to the plot so that beyond just a prediction of a particular card, if you're using the Redford stack, he teaches you exactly how to produce the other three mates to that person's birthday card. But as an illustration of how this can work for anybody, 
He gives you the thinking behind it and how you could apply that to your stack quite easily, but the work is actually done for you if you wanna use the Redford stack. I've never been a huge proponent of the Chronolog effect, but I really, really liked his thinking and style on this one. And in particular, not having to carry around a pocket calendar makes the trick usable for someone my age in today's world. Dunsicle ACAN is a really neat presentational hook for the ACAN effect, and it's not terribly hard to do. Even if you already do your own ACAN, you're gonna find some plots and presentations that you like from this book, which is something I always look for in a magic book. There's versions of how to perform an invisible deck without using a gimmick deck. You have triumph routines, poker deals, travelers mixed with red hot mama. And as if it wasn't enough that he teaches you all these effects, he also teaches you some principles which are pretty cool. He has a 26 card index that you can build yourself out of nothing more than basically playing cards and would allow you to present either the mate or the actual card depending on how you're using it. Some of the items in the book will require you to have a few gimmicks. He has a section in here on Christian Grace's level one gimmick, which if you don't know, allows you to show a deck of cards. You shake it, half the cards disappear. You shake it again and you're left with one card. That's the basics of it. There's a lot that can be done with it. There's a whole online group. It's a pretty neat utility gimmick and isn't that hard to do. Patrick got it up front. I remember seeing some of his comments in the level one Facebook group and he has printed some of those here with permission, as well as teaching you a way to perform the same effect without any gimmicks whatsoever. Other gimmicks that you might need would be your standard stuff like uh, double facers, double backs. There aren't very many gimmicked effects. Patrick prefers to work with a regular deck, but in case you're wondering what kind of things you need to buy to perform everything in the book, if you have level one and a few basic card gimmicks, I think you're gonna have what you need. There's also a whole section in here about partial stack use. Patrick seems to be very big on pointing out that you don't wanna get bound or tied up with a mem deck that once some of it's shuffled, you feel lost or panicked that if someone wants to shuffle your deck, you don't wanna allow that. So he gives you a lot of different options to perform various effects that are only using a partial stack anywhere down to say 13 cards. Stack Safe Poker Triumph, wow, say that five times fast. Stack Safe Poker Triumph is quite a triumph in my opinion in terms of the accomplishments of Patrick Redford and what can be accomplished with his stack. The routine is a longer one, more involved, but there's a lot of magic happening here. It starts as a demonstration of shuffle tracking, showing how you can track one card. It weaves its way into a triumph routine, no pun intended and ends with a surprising production of a royal flush in spades. And the best part, at the end, you get completely back into stack. So it's an incredible thought process. It will require a bit more skill. You'll need to be able to do some pharaohs and other things like that. But if that's your cup of tea and you're able to do it, this is a pretty neat way to demonstrate your skill, work with a mem deck, and remain completely intact. There's lots of other stuff in the book. I can't go through everything. These were some of the highlights for me that illustrated the thinking behind what Patrick has put into the book, as well as things that I just could see myself using. Let's talk briefly about the production values. I've talked about a few of these items along the way. The book is hardbound and it has that kind of, it's not a rubbery texture, but it's not a glossy finish on the book, which I like, as you can see, it doesn't really reflect in my lights here too much. So you're not gonna experience that. The paper, however, does reflect quite a bit. It's glossy paper, which might be your thing. It has a really nice feel to it. Heft, the size is an eight and a half by 11 size book, and it is about 250 pages. It is self-published, so there was a lot of love and work that went into this, no doubt. There are a few minor distractions in the book based on your level of detail orientation. None of them amount to anything that would detract from the overall quality of the book, but if you're really anal, you're gonna notice a few typos and things along the way, but like I said, they don't, they don't hurt the learning experience, and I think that the book is extremely well-produced. If it weren't enough that the book is well-produced, there's an online section to the book where you can see some performances, moves taught, and other videos in a resource center that Patrick has available on his website. So that's also pretty cool for the people who like to learn both ways, both visually and through reading the book. There are good references. He has a good table of contents with some asterisks telling you if the trick is Redford stack specific or if it can be adopted to a different stack. In addition, there are two different indices in the back. 
and there are lots of credits. I love his crediting section. He gives you several meaty paragraphs at the end of each trick that are gonna tell you more about who inspired him, what he was reading, probably where you can read more if you have access to those resources. In addition, he gives you some afterthoughts and other ways that you could do these tricks, different presentations, different slights that could be used. He's generally teaching you the way that he's settled on doing it best, but he gives you options. It's always great to see an author go that extra mile to share with you how else you could do this. So back to who is this book for? If you're an intermediate card handler who's either looking to get into Memdeck work or you're already a Memdeck proponent, maybe have your own stack that you're using, I think there's a lot of really great material in this book. The book is $70, so you're gonna have to make a decision about how much do you really value using Memdeck work. If you're a proponent of Patrick Redford's and you know you love his stuff, I think it's an easy buy because it is a, it is a pretty hefty book. You're definitely getting a lot of thinking and a lot of production value in the book. You're gonna learn a lot, I know I did. If you're not as into Memdeck work, there are probably some other resources that you could get for less money. The production values won't be as high. For example, Simon Aronson's books, I think most of those you can get for 30 to $40 right now, and they contain a lot of Memdeck magic, but they don't include a lot of video resources like this book does, and they could be a little overwhelming with their density and the intelligence level that Simon had when he wrote these things. That's not to say that Patrick's not intelligent, I'm just saying that he makes it more accessible for the everyday reader. I think there's definitely value at $70. It's really just a question of how much of this material do you think you'll use, and I certainly hope that this video helps you evaluate that. I think the highest compliment that I can pay to the book is that when I was done, I was actually thinking that I need to get the first book in the trilogy, and I am greatly looking forward to the next one completely out of order, which is TBD to be printed. Stay tuned for that. I wanna thank Patrick once again for sending me the book for review. It is a lovely book, and I think that if you're a Memdeck worker, you'll get a lot of value from it, and if you're not, this could be your first stop. Thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to check out our social media pages this week. Check out Don's, he always has a great selection and I think you're gonna find some great books and props to love there. And if you get the chance, pick up Slightly Out of Order. Until next time, keep reading.